Hey guys, welcome. I have been completely obsessed with the smoke simulations from Animal Well ever since I started playing that game. And I think, I think I figured out how it was done. So in this video, we're gonna make a physically accurate smoke simulation based on the famous paper, Real-Time Fluid Dynamics for Games by Joss Stam. Ready? Let's go. Okay, so even though I'm going for a smoke simulation in this video, it's based on fluid dynamics. All we need to add is a decay rate so that the smoke starts to disappear over time and play around with the viscosity and diffusion settings and we can make smoke. So we're gonna create a new script called Joss Stam Smoke Emitter. I'm gonna attach it to this empty smoke emitter game object and open it up. So the basis for this entire simulation is that all of the calculations happen inside of a grid. Each cell in our grid will hold density and velocity values. This is just how we simulate a fluid in a semi-realistic way that's fast enough for games to handle. Without a grid, the only other way to simulate something like this would be with particles, but I like how this method looks more. So we're going to add some grid settings. I think grid size is pretty self-explanatory and the cell size is the world size of each cell. Next, we need our fluid properties. We're gonna want viscosity, which is the resistance to the flow that the smoke is gonna have. And diffusion, which is basically how much the smoke spreads. And then we have time step for our simulation. I would like to simulate it at 60 frames per second, which is one divided by 60, which is 0 0.0167. And next we need some smoke properties, all of which I think are pretty self-explanatory. Just keep in mind that our emission point is in grid space. So if our grid size is 64, for example, then an emission point of 32 by 32 would be right in the center. We're also gonna need a material to actually display our smoke as well as a sprite. This will make a little more sense later when we make a simple shader for this. And let's also give it a sorting order as well. Now we're gonna add some 2D float arrays. And if you're not familiar with 2D arrays, I found the easiest way to think of them is like a grid or a matrix. If we have a grid of 64, think of the bottom left as 00, zero and the top as 64, 64. Now with this simulation, that's not actually the way that it is because we have extra buffer cells that we're gonna add in. I'm just trying to keep the explanation simple, but it is a little bit different than a vector two because it's stored as which row in the grid you wanna find first, then which column. So just keep that in mind. And finally, we need a smoke texture, which is how we're actually gonna display the thing. And we're gonna cache the reference to our game object that's going to hold the sprite that displays that texture. I'm also gonna store a reference to our radius squared, which is just gonna allow us to do a slightly faster calculation later on by avoiding square root functions wherever possible. And finally, we're eventually gonna be setting our materials texture that we set up in the shader. So let's grab a reference to that now. And just doing it this way, rather than referencing the string is just a little bit faster. Okay, so first things first, our emission radius squared is obviously our radius times our radius. And now we're going to initialize our fluid arrays. We have six of them. And as I said, the size of our grid will actually have an additional two to make it easy to check for boundary conditions. And then we just go through each array and set the size. And next we need to actually create our visualization. So this involves creating a new texture 2D like so. We're gonna create a new game object and make it a child of this game object. We're gonna zero out its local position and change the scale to match our grid size. Right now it's just a blank game object that's sized and positioned correctly, but let's add a sprite and we're gonna set its material to be equal to our smoke material. And again, we'll create a super simple shader for this soon enough, but for now let's just set the texture. 
And we also have to set a sprite, which does seem a little bit weird, but even though we don't want to display a sprite, you still have to assign a sprite to a sprite renderer since that's how we're doing it in order for our texture to actually be seen. And finally, we'll set the sorting order. Okay, so the setup is all done. Now let's actually start on the actual simulation. So in each frame, we need to actually inject some smoke or there's not gonna be a whole lot to look at. We need to simulate our velocity and we need to simulate our density. And then we're gonna update our texture to show all of the changes from that frame. So to actually puff a bunch of smoke out and visualize it, we grab the coordinates of our emission points and round them to whole numbers. Then we're gonna loop through a square around the emission point to check, is this within that circular radius that we want? And again, we're just doing a square distance check here because it's way cheaper than calling math f dot square root for every cell in our grid. And if the cell we're checking is within that radius, then we add smoke density to that spot. But we do it by scaling it based on how close it is to the center by using a fall off factor. That's what's gonna give us that nice soft looking emission. It's gonna be strong in the middle of the radius and it's gonna fade as it gets further away. And finally, we inject some velocity in there so the smoke actually moves. First though, I want to calculate a random velocity for both the X and the Y, which is not strictly necessary. I just think it makes the smoke look a little more kind of smoke-like coming off of a candle or something like that. So we add that into the cell. And we're also going to scale the velocity by the fall off as well so that the middle gets pushed the most and the edges get less of a push. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, next let's do the velocity step. First, we're going to copy our X and Y velocity into the previous X and Y velocity arrays like this. Next, we diffuse the velocity, which is going to simulate viscosity. And that just means how sticky the fluid seems. Like, is it like water or is it like honey? Or in our case, since we're working with smoke, how resistant to movement is the smoke going to be, is another way to think about it. Now with real fluids, they don't just magically expand or compress. And the way that we often express this is by calling it divergence free. So this method here is doing that. It's basically gonna clean up our velocity to make it more realistic and meet that condition. Again, if you want more details, I've linked Joss Stam's paper in the description below if you wanna read up on it in greater detail. Okay, now we need to copy the velocity again because we're going to simulate advection, which apparently is just a fancy word for moving fluid around. I had never heard of that word until I started looking into this simulation, but apparently that's what it means. And this step basically makes the fluid carry its own velocity. So if a part of the smoke is moving really fast in one direction, it's going to drag its velocity values with it, which gives us that really nice, pretty swirling motion that you see in our smoke simulation. And we need to project again, just to reinforce that divergence free condition that we talked about just a minute ago, because the advection can introduce a little bit of error. So we wanna clean that up with the project method. Okay, moving on to our density step. This is where the smoke actually comes to life because this handles the smoke movement and the smoke decay. So we're gonna copy our density into our previous density to basically take a snapshot of where the smoke was before we started moving it around. Then we're going to diffuse the smoke. This kind of makes our smoke naturally spread out, kind of like if you drop food coloring into water, it slowly expands outward. That's kind of what this is doing. And now we apply our advection. And this is where we take all our velocity fields, which was all that cool swirling motion that we calculated earlier, and we use them to actually push the smoke around. The grid kind of behaves very much like an ocean in the sense that we'll have currents that are gonna push our smoke around and give us those awesome looking swirl patterns. And if we were just doing liquid, we wouldn't need this next step, but since we are doing smoke, we need to apply a decay over time, which we do by looping through our grid, making sure that we skip the boundaries at zero and multiply our density by the smoke decay so that it slowly starts to fade out over time. 
All right, so here comes all of the math heavy stuff. And I'll just be honest with you guys, I don't understand these methods very well. I kind of just took what was given to me from Josh Stam's paper. I think I'd be doing a disservice by even trying to explain it. So again, the paper is in the description if you want the details behind all of this math. I am just here to make sure that you get the thing actually working in Unity. So here is the diffuse method. I'm not gonna leave these on the screen long enough for you to actually copy them out in real time, so feel free to pause if you need to. Here's the advect method. Here is the project method. And we also need a method called linear solve. And one more method called set boundary. All right, with all of those out of the way, we finally update our smoke texture to take all of those changes into account visually. So first we're going to need an array of colors, which can be our grid size squared. Then we're gonna loop through our grid and convert our density to brightness. But we're gonna clamp it so that we don't get any HDR values. We definitely don't want that for smoke. And we divide by 10 just to keep everything at a more reasonable and intuitive level. We do I plus one and J plus one here to skip our buffer zone cells at the edge of the grid. Now to actually convert our 2D grid coordinates into a 1D list of pixels, we say J times grid size plus I. And then we plug in the density value for R, G, B, and A. And finally, we take those colors and we apply them to the texture with the set pixels method. And do not forget to call the apply method or none of this is gonna show up and you'll just have a gray square. And just to make things a little bit nicer, let's create an on draw gizmos method to draw a little sphere in the editor where the smoke actually emits from, like so. All right, so we finally need to set up the little shader to make this thing work. So we're gonna create a new sprite lit shader graph, and we're using lit just to make sure that our smoke is affected by 2D light sources. Let's create a texture 2D and call it smoke texture, because that's what we called it in our emitter script. And just for fun, let's multiply this by a smoke color as well. You could totally accomplish this as well by just changing the sprite color, but I personally prefer to just keep that strictly for alpha and use the shader for color, but that's just my preference. And we're gonna plug this into the base color and the sampled textures alpha into the alpha. All right, let's make a material from that shader and plug it into the smoke material here. And remember I said we need to actually assign a sprite to our sprite renderer in order for it to be visible. That's just how it is. So we could just apply a square sprite, which is built in if you click on this eyeball over here, so long as you have the 2D packages installed. Now if you play, you can see this beautiful smoke. Remember, if you want it to emit from the center, then just center your emission point here. Now this is a really nice starting position. It's not a very long script, but there's a lot of room for performance optimizations here. I do think this would be a great contender for a compute shader to really heavily optimize the performance on this. Now that's way out of scope here, but I don't wanna leave you guys with just this because I'd like to also show you a simple way to introduce colliders that affect our smoke as well. And to do that, we first need to add this set blocked cell method in our smoke emitter script. It's pretty straightforward. We're gonna set our density, velocity, and all previous density and velocity to zero. Now we need to call that method from somewhere. So we're going to create a new game object called smoke blocker. And I'm also gonna create a new script called smoke blocker and attach it to that game object and open it up. So we're gonna keep this as simple as possible. We're just going to require a box collider 2D on this game object. We're also gonna need a reference to our smoke emitter as well as that box collider. And let's grab the box collider 2D reference in awake. 
Now, before we can do anything, we need two little helper methods. We need to be able to convert a position in the world into our smoke simulator grid coordinate and vice versa as well. So we get the emitter's world position and divide it by our cell size and add half of our grid size. For the grid to world, we take the grid position and subtract half the grid size and then multiply that result with the cell size. Now, finally, in update, we're going to first convert our collider bounds to our grid space like this. Then get the actual grid coordinates that we need to affect. We're going to loop through those and check if the current grid cell is inside of our collider. And if it is, then we call that set blocked cell method we just set up. And now we just plug in our emitter and hit play. Actually, I'm going to do this with a sprite just so that it's a little bit easier to visualize what's happening. As a thank you to my patrons, I'm working on a much heftier version of this system that's a little more game ready and is modeled after the particle system in Unity. So it has stop actions, boundary fades so the border of the grid isn't so obvious. It has smart grid positioning based on the direction that the smoke's moving in to give it maximum room to move in that desired velocity, as well as a whole bunch of emission controls, including shapes and burst. And I am attempting to move it into a compute shader to make sure that it's nice and fast as well. It's not ready yet though, because it's it's been a whole thing. So when I've actually finished it and uploaded it to GitHub for my patrons, I will add a pinned comment to this video to let you know. So if you want to support us on Patreon and you want to pick that up, make sure that you check for a comment from me below first to make sure that it's actually on there. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.